How do we deal with vectors? We do the mathematical representation of adding vectors. And this leads us to the vector component method. One of the most important things that we will do in 4A. When you leave this course, you have to be an expert at the vector component method. And what you're going to see here is that on the first exam, it's a huge deal because we're gonna spend three chapters, more than half of the material is gonna rely on your ability to get vector components. So it's a big, big, big deal. So let's go look at that. So what we wanna do now is that we wanna go in and we wanna create mathematical representation of vectors so that we could start to mathematically add them. So what we wanna, one of the most important things, believe it or not, is something that you're all know and love is that in coordinate systems, there are quadrants. And your use of quadrants becomes quite important, believe it or not. So when I think about a quadrant, of course, we're talking about where are the X and Y values when you go to this quadrant? So if I pick a point here, I know that the X and Y component here is both positive and positive. If I pick a point here, then I know that in this quadrant, you got negative X, positive Y. And if I go into this quadrant here, we know that both of these components are negative. And then if I pick another component down here in the fourth quadrant, we know that these components will give us positive X, negative Y. You're gonna see that we wanna maximize the efficiencies when we go and add vectors. There's, a, there's, a, there's an inefficient way to deal with vectors and there's an efficient way to deal with vectors. The efficient way is to use, is knowing the quadrants and how they actually behave here. So what we wanna do then is that the way I'm gonna to start to do this is I'm gonna introduce what are known as unit vectors. So when we draw a coordinate system, vectors are decomposed into components using unit vectors. So when vectors are drawn, In coordinate systems, they are decomposed into components. Using unit vectors. Okay, where am I doing? And what I mean by that is that we have, and since we're only dealing with two coordinates until we get to exam two, I'm only gonna focus on two coordinates. So what we have here is that we have two coordinates that we're gonna be dealing with. Of course, they're the Y and the X. And what you find here is that there's a vector called a unit vector, one that points in the X direction called I hat. And there's another unit vector that points in the Y direction, which is called J hat. 
And what we're doing here is that what we say here is that the I hat vector here, what it does here, it's a unit vector pointing only in the x direction. Whereas my j vector is a unit vector pointing only in what? The y direction. And so what you find here is that each of these unit vectors are special just like you. If you take the length of one of these unit vectors, its length is one. So in other words, the magnitude of unit vectors is one. What do I mean by that? So if I take the magnitude and the symbol this, this means magnitude, and remember, magnitude tells us about the length. So, so if I take the magnitude of I, this guy is exactly one unit. If I take the magnitude of J hat, this length is exactly one. That's what I mean. That's what's special about the unit vector here. So what we can do then is that we could then start showing you how we get decomposition of uh, vectors here. So what we do here is that we start off with a point AX, AY. So I'm gonna set up a coordinate system and then I'm going to ask, um, and then I'm going to, um, so I have a point here. So here's what I mean by that. So I have a coordinate system like this. And all I know is that this is my point, A, X, A, Y. And this is the Y, and this is the X axis here. So now I have a question. Starting at the origin, how does one get to the point A? Starting at the origin, how does one get to AX, AY? And the answer is it goes like this. So, so the first thing that I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna move along the x-axis. So my first step here is that I'm gonna move along the x-axis by distance ax. But how do I move along the x-axis? Well, I know I gotta move this far I then use my I hat vector. So that means then I'm gonna move a distance AX along this direction. And that's what the I hat, but the distance that I moved here is this AX. So then I come back and I repeat the process. How do I move along what? The Y axis. until I get to AY. So in this case, I need to move at least AY to get there, but I need to move along that. So what I do then is that now, I'm already here at this point because that's what I did initially, right? Here's where I'm starting from when I'm going up here. Here's my starting point now for the Y. So you could see here is that what I'm gonna do here is that now, I move directly up. And as I move directly up, the way I do that is I go AY in the J direction. 
And so now Abar I arrived at this point. But what this tells us me now, that now I have what? I have a connection between the origin and my point. And this is what we call the vector A. So when I sum these vectors, that means that the sum of A is then going to be, A is then going to be what? It's going to be AX in the I direction plus AY in the J direction. And that's what gives me my vectors here. And so, of course, my vector A has a length. Now, we don't want to go in and measure it like a ruler to get the length. And I don't want to use a protractor to get the angle. So how do we measure the magnitude slash direction of A. And the answer comes is that that looks like a right triangle. And because it looks like a right triangle, that means I can use effectively the same types of calculations to actually do that. So if I want the magnitude, how do I do that? Well, I want the magnitude of what? My a vector. How do we write this? We typically write this as A. And so how do I get the length? Because this is a vector that looks like a right triangle, I have AX squared. I have AY squared. And then I'm going to square those and then take the square root. So I get my magnitude in this way. And then to get my direction, theta here, That means here that we typically use the, the, uh, the tangent of theta here. And in this case, theta is then going to be the inverse of AY divided into AX. And that's how we get the, the details of that vector here. But another thing that we can do here is that that's how I created this. But what I want to do is that I want to do the reverse. Most problems start with a vector A. But we want to what we say, we want to decompose the vector into components. So how do I do that? Well, we just reverse engineer the process here, but there's a, a, a systematic way of thinking about it. So let's look at our vector now. So if I look at our vector, I have what? Well, I have a vector that looks something like this here. Uh, I didn't get that through the origin, did I? And what you're seeing here is that I start off with some vector A. So what we do here is we then talk about projections. So now what we want to do here is that we want to, so we want to project the vector A onto the x-axis and the y-axis. So how do I project it here? So what we typically say here is that if I project A onto the x-axis, then that means I'm literally dropping a perpendicular line to the x-axis. And so this length here is the length AX. 
Now I do the exact same thing for the y-axis. I project it onto the y-axis. And so as I project my purple A vector onto the y-axis, then this gives me the projection of it on the y-axis. So typically, when, if I start with the vector A, not only do I have the magnitude, but I also have the direction. So here, what I'm seeing here, right? So that means I start with magnitude A and direction theta. The components then, the components AX and AY again is due to the right triangle things here. And so what you're seeing here is that then this AX is really, well, let's look at the triangle. So if I look at the triangle, what am I actually seeing here? I have a triangle that looks like this. I know theta, I know A. So the question is, how do I get AX? The way I get AX here is that note that the angle, right, is, uh, so if I look at the A, this is adjacent, AX is adjacent to the angle. And when it's adjacent to the angle, it tells us that I use AX over A gives me cosine theta. So in this case, I could then solve for AX and you could see that I have it in the, I have what? I have the magnitude and I have the direction. Exactly how I started off with the vector. Now, if I come over here and I say, what about my opposite side of this triangle? If it's opposite, then we know that this has to be what? A Y over A equals sine of theta. So that means I can rewrite this, this um, projection as A sine of theta. Again, it's relative to the magnitude and the direction. So a single vector is not important. What's most important is adding two vectors in component form. And that's the key to this, this chapter right here, okay? The most important piece to vector components is adding vectors. So let's go look at this. So what I want to do here is that I want to start off graphically, and then I want to show you what it means to add this. So I'm going to set up a coordinate system. OK, here's my y, here's my x. And then I'm going to create two vectors. I'm going to start by creating vector A. So I'm just going to arbitrarily put this vector. And let's say that this is my vector right here. So let me make sure I get some words in here. So here's my vector A. OK, here's my vector A. So when I look at my vector A, what you're gonna see here is that it has what? It has an X component, which I can write like this. But remember, this is really how I get to the point A, X, and A, Y. So what I can do here is that I can now come in and I can create a projection. And so I know that this distance here is AXI, and I know that this projection here, this is AYJ hat, okay? 
Now what I want to do here is that starting at A, I want to add a second vector. That means I'm going to add another vector B, which is then Bx i plus By j. And I want to add that. So when I add that, I'm going to create a vector. Let's say that looks something like this here. Let's say that it goes all the way to right here. So this is my vector B here. Okay, so if, if this is my vector B, actually, I'm gonna write my B vector later. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna write it up here. But note what this really means here. What did I do? So if I start off at my point A and I add B to A, what I'm really doing is that I'm doing what? Well, I'm really adding a height change here, right? So when I'm thinking about this height change, I'm really seeing that this, that this guy here from here to here, I've added by in the j direction. And then from here to here, I'm adding what? From here to here, I'm adding bx in the i direction. So when I look at the result of A plus B, what you're actually seeing is what? Well, you're seeing this vector. So the result of adding A plus B must be this guy right here. So this has to be A plus B. So when you look at this thing, what does this really look like? So now I'm going to add A plus B. So if I add A plus B, look what happens here. So I'm going to try to make this painful for me by adding the color so you can see exactly what I'm saying. So when I add these, note that I add what? So look at along the x-axis. I add the red AX. And then I got to add the green BX to get all the way to this point right here. So this guy is in the I direction, the X direction. But then what do I got to do? So I went this direction all the way to here, but now I got to go up. So as I go up, look what's happening here. I got to first do what? I got to go up a height of the red AY. And then I got to go up the additional height of the BY. But I'm doing this all in the J direction. So what you're seeing here is that I get to this point up here, which is now AX plus BX. You know what? I should do this to be color coordinate. You know, I'm going to run out of space here, so I'm going to move this over just a little bit. So when you look at this thing, this is going to be AX plus BX, AY plus BY. So you're seeing here that all of the light components are being grouped together here, right? Focus on the light components. These guys are all the X's. And these guys are all the Y's here. But wait a minute. We just talked about this. If I have the X's and the Y's, I can get the length of that vector. And I can get the angle of that vector. So then picture-wise, if I want the magnitude of A plus B, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to define this as the vector C here just so that we make it nice and easy, it goes something like this here. So then using the one vector, you know, results, I can then come and say here is that if I want the magnitude, then the magnitude says that C, which I call C, then must be, I square all of the x's. And then I 
square all of the y's and then take the square root. That gives me the magnitude of the vector a plus b, which I now call c. And if I want the direction, then it's got to be the tangent inverse of what? All of the y's divided by all of the x's. And so this tells us how we add two vectors. In other words, I can take a vector a plus b, and I can get its length, and I can get its magnitude. 